Today we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. He's not just Christ the King feast. It's the feast of Christ who is the King of the universe. And you will know why we are saying that and why I emphasize this part. We will get to that as you reflect on these readings today. So Ezekiel, a priest in the temple, a prophet of the Lord, is one of the first ones to go into the Babylonian exile. And as he shepherds the people, as a prophet of God, he sees the shepherds of the people, the true shepherds of the people, God sees that they have been, are being unfaithful to their flock. They're not feeding the hungry. They're not bandaging the sick and the ill. They're not visiting the strangers. They're not bringing the flock that is lost, that has gone astray, back to the fold. But guess what they're doing? They're just seeking the good for themselves, the pleasures of their bodies, the pleasures of the world, accumulating riches for themselves. If you read Ezekiel chapter 34, you'll see there's more to what the Lord says in the first reading today. It's because of what they did not do. So to say, you know, Christian Catholic, you know, I confess the sins of omission. But they had a responsibility. They had a responsibility. They did not do what they were supposed to do in their responsible position. So the Lord God takes power over the people. He says, I myself will now shepherd them. And how is he going to do that? He's going to send his son Jesus, right? The first advent where Jesus the Son of God will come into this world, will live like us, born of the Virgin. We celebrate, starting next weekend, we will celebrate the second advent of Jesus. We are preparing for that. And we will recall the first advent of Jesus. And that first advent of Jesus happened particularly because the shepherds of the flock were not faithful. While Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Amos, and all the prophets of God were really very faithful people. There were other leaders, the kings, who weren't faithful in, to their covenant with the Lord. And so the Lord God says, I will send a shepherd after my heart. And that is Jesus. Jesus, the good shepherd that we hear in the gospel passages. John chapter 10 talks about where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he indeed is. He goes far and beyond the shepherds or the prophets of God. Because he is the son of God himself. He's going to come into this world. He did. And what do you see him doing? Micah, you see him healing the sick, right? You see him bringing the dead to life, right? Gabriel, you see him casting out demons, right? Adeline, you see him doing such great things, right? Isaac, Jesus does so much good in his lifetime, far beyond the dreams of prophet Ezekiel, right? This shepherd is much more different. He's going over and beyond what the other shepherds have done or not done. He's going to be that one true good shepherd after the heart of Jesus. He fed the hungry. He clothed the naked. He visited the sick and the strangers. He freed the imprisoned. He brought back to life the people that were dead. So that's the shepherd we are talking about. He is the king of the universe. We've got to get that down. He is the king of our family. He is the king of my heart individually. He is the king of our city, of our state, of our country, of our world, of the whole universe. Because he is the creator of heaven and earth. And in his world we live. We've got to get that down so that we can truly 
truly live like sons and daughters who belong to that kingdom. Jesus is most fully the good shepherd in his public ministry we talked about. So what is the command of the risen Lord to his apostles, to his disciples after his resurrection? In the background of the recent report on McCarrick report and the abuse that he, you know, did in the church and abused young men and women while being, you know, a priest, a bishop, a cardinal, a strong leader here. That's the unfaithful shepherd that Ezekiel is talking about. And Jesus is going to renew his sheepfold. Jesus is going to renew the shepherds after his heart. And so he says to his disciples and apostles, after he prepares them, go and preach to all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What does the good shepherd of the sheep do? We talked about. He now raises up shepherds after his own heart. While he has done good, he's going to send these shepherds who are going to imitate him and do exactly what their one true good shepherd has done. They will continue his good work, healing, binding wounds, calling in those who are in margins back home, those who have distanced themselves from faith and devotion to God, those who have gone astray. Jesus, through his shepherds in our time, in this world at this time, is going to raise up shepherds after his heart who will bring these people home. There's work for the church to be done. The corporal works of mercy, the spiritual works of mercy. We are the shepherds after his great heart. We are servants of this great king of the universe. What does all this look like on the ground? What does Christ's kingship look like for us? What does our participation in his shepherding role look like in modern time in the life of the church, whether individually, whether it's family, parents, whether it's brothers and sisters, siblings, whether it's the church of Christ here at St. John the Apostle. What does the ground reality look like in our participation in the shepherding work of Christ? Matthew chapter 25 give us, gives us magnificent and chilling message and what it looks, it has to look like. The shepherd of the sheep sends out the new sheep that he has chosen to do this work today to participate in his kingship. So on the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, the passage from the gospel is a wonderful way for each of us and even for your little children to examine our consciences each night. Examining our conscience each night, taking the gospel of Matthew chapter 25. Asking, how am I participating in the shepherding work of Christ? Maybe at the end of each day, moving forward, we could take this upon ourselves. Do I follow the command of this one true great shepherd and king today? So let's quickly look at uh, what Jesus has preached in the gospel. Were there people, this is how you want to examine your conscience, were there people that crossed my path who were literally hungry, who were literally hungry, begging for food? Did I feed them? Or were there people who crossed my path today that were hungry for attention, hungry for a few moments of my time? Maybe your spouse, maybe your child, maybe your brother, maybe your neighbor, maybe someone you know who is in need of such, who is hungry for such needs, hungry for attention, hungry for some moments of my time. Did I feed them? 
Were there people who crossed my path today who were literally thirsty? There are many in the world today who do not have fresh water like we do 24-7. They struggle for fresh water, even in our country here. And so are there people who are not just literally thirsty for water, but who are thirsty for love, for kindness, for friendship? Start with your family. This examination starts with my brother, my sister, my neighbor, my coworker, my friend, a stranger, and those we worship with. Have I quenched their thirst for kindness, friendship, love? Did God place in my heart, in my life, on my path, today a stranger dying on inside of himself due to loneliness, due to isolation, due to what we call social distancing today? Did God put someone on my path today that is literally in need of clothing, think about winter and its cold, or perhaps needing to be sheltered from the attacks and from gossip and from misjudgment? Did I have the opportunity today to pray for someone who is in prison while we are not allowed to visit those imprisoned physically in person? Or perhaps free those people who are imprisoned due to addictions of every kind, pornography, alcohol, drug abuse, gambling, addiction to the social media or, you know, screen time? Have I reached out to them? When we do these concrete things, brothers and sisters, when we do these concrete things, we are operating in line with Jesus Christ, King of the universe, exercising our leadership after his heart. When we do these things, we are cooperating with the great shepherd of the sheep. So on this solemnity, friends, we acknowledge Jesus Christ, our King, our Lord, King of the universe. On this solemnity, we look very seriously within ourselves at our cooperation with this one true great shepherd, whether we are doing works of mercy and love as the citizens of that great nation, not just here on earth, Kingdom of heaven is where we belong, where Christ reigns supreme. I want to end with this. You know, the start of the 20th century, now we are at, you know, a few years down, two decades down, the 21st century. So at the start of the 20th century, Pope Pius, the, <coughs> excuse me, Pope Pius the 11th and the church then was facing what we face today. I'm reading what Pope Pius XI wrote at that time in his encyclical. First, after, before I quote him, after the First World War, Europe remained in turmoil. Many countries disappeared as new ones emerged in their place. <coughs> the Communist Party sprouted in Russia. Fascism took hold in Italy and Hitler was gaining, gaining a voice in German politics. Pope Pius XI saw how secularism was rapidly gaining a large foothold and needed to be challenged. In 1925, he released a papal encyclical, Quas Primus, naming Jesus Christ as the Lord of creation. He wanted to remind Christians Catholics, that their allegiance was to their spiritual leader in heaven, not to any earthly power. This is what he said. We remember saying that these manifold evils in the world were due to the fact that the majority of men and women had thrust Jesus out and his holy law out of their lives. Does that ring a bell? 
you know, 100 years later almost, how much true is that? That these had no place, these meaning Christ and his kingdom laws, had no place either in their private lives, family lives, or in their political lives. And we said further, Pope Pius XI says, that as long as individuals and, and states refused to submit to the rule of our Savior, there would be no really peaceful prospect of a state or a nation. There would be no lasting peace among nations. Men must look for the peace of Christ in the kingdom of Christ. And that's when he established this feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. And that's the kingdom we live in. Let us remember, you did it to me. Let us follow, let us embrace the values of God's kingdom that this one true good shepherd gives us today. May this Eucharist feed and nurture us to just do the same so that at the end of our time, Jesus Christ will say to us, Come, blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit.